everybody. Welcome to the Desert Underground podcast. Holy shit, it has been a long time. Uh, I am Desert Danish. With me is Mr. Brian Holm. How you doing, man? Uh, I'm much better doing a podcast. Yeah, they hear it's been a little bit, a little bit, huh? Much, much, much better. And I know the people are fucking dying. Why have we not been doing a podcast? Oh, God. So many reasons. So many reasons. <laughs> reasons? Because? It's, it's none of those reasons are because we didn't want to. <laughs> right. Thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> so so there's definitely been a want. Um, things get in the way sometimes. Um, unexpected craziness all the time. I don't know. We could say work and bands and stuff like that. We can, well, I mean, so... I think we all know what's been going on the last uh, the last six months. Of the the pandemic's starting to die off, and everybody's just uh, trying to stay, keep it together, <laughs> keep it together, keep it together, keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> trying try not to lose their shit. The and, nonstop mantra in your head. Oh, no, pretty much. I think we're getting there, though. We're finally there. Another couple months, maybe another. I mean, everyone's getting shots in their arms, and it feels like spring for real. I actually hope on the horizon, you know, feels pretty good. What weather's getting warmer, things yeah. are happening. People are getting some some vaccinations and more things are opening up, especially in California. Cuz uh-huh. cuz if you're in Florida, nothing ever closed. So you're good to go. <laughs> That's true, but if you're in Florida, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Florida's like like I don't even know how to put it. <laughs> if you live in Florida, you know. You, I, I like saw, deep down, you know. I saw a meme the other day, and it said, uh, "America, you mean Florida?" And it's forty nine other bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel that some days. I feel that. Not me, but you know, we live in the great state of California. So you know, you used to like you used to look look at the South, and you'd be like, "Holy shit, those those." Crazy, them crazy rednecks. And you'd think, uh, you'd think like Alabama and Mississippi and all that. And that, uh, there's two states now that in my mind I go, wow. And it's Florida and Texas. Florida and Texas. The two of them. I'm just like, how in the fuck do these people, how do you Texas? Well, so it's <laughs> how, kinda, how do you Florida? <laughs> so it's kind of like California too, though. So you've got your San Diego Californians. Right, right, right. right. And then you've got your, you know, Sacramento weed. <laughs> area Californians, and then you got like San Francisco, and then you got Los Angelinos, oh, right? And then you've got the inland, and the inland folks, I guess. And then you've got uh, the, Hills Have Eyes, Rich Crest area, the, the Baker Tucky <laughs> folks. Dude, somebody said that the other day, Ridge Tucky. Yeah, they just carry. <laughs> that was great. Right? I was uh, that was never. I've never heard that term, but I love it. Pretty much. Um. So so same with Texas. You know, El Paso is not like the rest of Texas. El Paso is like. Mexico, basically, because it's just a 20-mile strip of land right. between New Mexico and Mexico. Well, I mean, and then you've got Austin. It's uh, basically California right. in, in Texas. And, and, and you've got Dallas, which is Texas. And then you get Houston. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, I just assume there's a lot of water. Oh, Houston's nice, man, it, except for the Texans. I was supposed to go to some river walk there one time. And, it's a bit suspicious. Uh That trip got canceled. I, I was supposed to be in Florida actually this last year, and that got canceled because of COVID. I had the the flight was booked and everything, man. I was supposed to go to Jacksonville. Well, you know, I think if you've got people there, um, probably much much more enjoyable than when you don't when you just kind of visit. Yeah. When and that's and that's you probably would say that about any place, but not really because there are some places you can go to that you just. You can just go there and vacation, or you can go there and sightsee, or you can go there and just check it out, and it's cool as shit by yourself, you know, or, or yeah. not knowing anybody, not by yourself so much. But um, some places, man, like like Jacksonville, <laughs> like, I just don't see it. I mean, you right, kind of right. need somebody there to, to, like, show you around and go, hey, this well, is why this fucking place is cool. Well, it wasn't quite Jacksonville. It was St. Augustine, which is more on the water. Um, I think it was flying into Jacksonville. Yeah, I was gonna go check out the alligator farm, and, right, right. you know, all the random shit. I actually saw a video from them the other day. I follow them on Facebook. Uh, somebody, there's a zip line over the alligators, <laughs> and somebody <laughs> lost their shoe, <laughs> and it was just a fucking frenzy, right, man. <laughs> isn't, isn't, like, isn't that where the um, uh, Carol fucking Baskin lives? I believe. Uh, no, not not there. I don't know, but but same with Florida. There's there's parts of Florida and there's parts of Texas and there's parts of California. So I can't lump all of them in there. Sure, but definitely enough of them <laughs> to where I can be like, all right, you fuckers. <laughs> um, 
And what the hell? New York was like off the hook for a while too. Where right. you're just like, what are you doing? So it's funny. Is I have a friend. Um, this guy was uh, um, born and raised in like like Jersey. So he's got that whole rough, angry Jersey thing. And then spent the rest of his time um, in Philly. So I mean, you can just imagine this guy's personality, right? Sure, sure. Took the family and moved to Southern Florida. It was just a. Uh, in my mind, I mean, I haven't talked to him. Maybe he's changed, but I, I just picture like the sorest thumb in a crowd of sore thumbs. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it's such a mob thing to do, right? Like, right. Yeah, I'm from Jersey, and I moved to fucking Florida. Yeah, but uh, I don't think he, he didn't move to. He didn't move to like the city or to like. He, I mean, he's living like out in the, the you swamp. know, right? <laughs> the Everglades, right? Um, yeah, my buddy, my buddy Tim lives down there, and he's uh he's living like pretty much on the water at this point. And I'm just like, it, it's crazy. All these pictures I oh, see on the ocean or on the bayou. Um, kind of in the middle. There's, you know, there's, he, he's, so he's actually moving to where he's right on like a little, um, bayou type river, but it is only like a few miles from the ocean. Gotcha. Gotcha. So he's like, yep. Just going to set up my fishing rod and sit on my porch. Dude, so it seems really cool. So the, but the difference between the two is enormous, especially in a place like Florida. Like if you live on the bayou, you're talking about gators mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and skeeters. Well, there is a gator farm there. Yeah, skeeters and snakes <laughs> and all like all kinds of crazy. You can't even really sit on the porch without risking right. you know something. Uh, but if you live on the beach, you're like, oh god, I don't have to worry about any of that shit. No gators, no skeeters, but you got fucking hurricanes. <laughs> yeah. So either way. Yeah. Florida's is just not a not a desirable place. No, in, I mean, in, my, in my mind. I mean, the first thing I think of when I think of Florida, and not to bash on Florida, but the first thing I think of is swamp ass. Is I sweat a lot because I'm a big <laughs> dude, and the last thing I want is a place that's going to make me sweat more. All right. And uh, I spent some time down in uh, Georgia. I spent six months of my life in Georgia, and that was humid enough. <laughs> And I'm good, man. I, the <laughs> South and me. Uh, I took a trip to South Carolina one time, North Carolina, even on the East Coast, like DC, it's, it's okay. But I mean, once you get down to like South Carolina and Georgia, oh, that humidity it just, just kills you. Fuck, man. <laughs> no thanks, dude. I'm good. So my problem with Florida is Floridians. Right. Yeah. Well, most it, of them. Yeah. It's that you know that game where you you just you play you play the game you type of random google thing yeah, yeah, man yeah. in florida <laughs> you know yeah and it's just for me it's the same and i hate to keep bashing on texas but biggest problem in texas is fucking texans yeah so I, but but you know relatively the same thing with californians well true but i'm a californian so i have that total built-in <laughs> bias where i can like uh-uh no man yeah fuck y'all man <laughs> we're good as i wore spandex in the 80s <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Californians, it's, it's weird. Like, like when I go to LA, I'm always like, do I look at this super hot chick with fake boobs, or do I look at this crazy man with a tinfoil hat <laughs> <laughs> who's claiming that he invented Jesus? That's true. Yeah, it's LA is a trip to me, man. Like a lot of California is not too bad, and and I'm gonna say a statement I've never said my whole life until this week. Bakersfield has some good things too. True story. True story. I, I wish Olsen was here so he could do that crickets thing right now. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding, man. I, <laughs> I had to go to Bakersfield twice, and I, I hit up a cool pizza joint. Uh, there's like a little downtown area. I, I don't know, like Old Town, Downtown, whatever they call it. And um, there was Jerry's Pizza, which was like a little punk rock pizza joint slash bar, which was pretty cool. Um, and And... Usually, like, good pizza costs a lot. This was, like, normal price. You know, and that's good for me. So, that's one thing. That's one thing. <laughs> then I went to the antique music uh, store, which I, I sent you a video of all those Mesa Boogie full stacks and all that stuff. Uh, yes, you did. They had, uh, they had 60s, 70s, 80s, all these badass vintage guitars in great shape. They had vintage, vintage cabs, which I'd never even thought about. Um, just everything cool that had ever happened in history. They had at least one of them. And then a couple of the newer stuff. Well, so I suppose that makes a lot of sense. Um, 
As much as you hate to admit it, Bakersfield was a mecca and a capital for um, music back in the day. And it, it was country music, but they had like they had their literally their own quote unquote sound. Yeah, Bakersfield sound, man. And yeah. they had, they had was so, it yeah. the Crystal Palace or yeah. something there? Yeah, Buck Owens and Buck Dwight Yoakam is from there. So I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not. I don't enjoy being there that much. Well, I mean, technically, but. didn't um um. Social distortion. Mike Nuss has got some roots there too, right? No, no. He just got stuck there once and wrote a song about it. Well, he's from he's from Orange County. Fuller, that's close. He's, right? from, he's from Fullerton. Oh, Fuller, Tucky. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, Bakersfield has the bomb ass pizza joint. It had the cool ass guitar plays. Had some cool tattoo shops that I I went to. That went to a cool skate shop. Um, they had a mall. <laughs> which if you're from Ridgecrest, a mall is a big deal, man. Shit, we got an auto mall too. <laughs> um, now, and, Bakersfield gets a bad rap. It's um, part of it is because of its history and mm-hmm. then you got that, that, you know, the ag culture there. And a big part of it is the, the math, obviously, but, um, like every town's got a nice side to it and a shitty side. Bakersfield just happens to have a huge shitty side and they have oil deal, yeah. which is like, that's like having your own skid row when you're not a big town. So, so it's, it, it had been a while I, it, since I've really seen a meth head. Um, Cause in Ridgecrest, I'm sure they're around, but this was like a very prominent, I'm sitting in the punk rock pizza joint and some, some lady comes in and I, I haven't been around a meth head since I lived in Tacoma because there's plenty there. And man, did it bring back some memories. Because I was like, I was like, immediately, I was like, oh, oh you're on meth. There she is. <laughs> they missed you. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, but yeah, it's it's one of those things you just don't see a lot around the smaller town. Because, you know, the smaller towns, so there's more cops that know the people. And sure, sure. They're, they're keeping an eye on them. Whereas here, it was just kind of like, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, yeah, it was, it's kind of sad. But. Bigger, bigger town. That's right. what you get. Yeah. I mean, you go to Lancaster, you'll get the same thing. I'm sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. In Lancaster, you can buy a, um, a blood testing kit right in the parking lot of your of your gig. <laughs> Which gig was that? <laughs> I would put a shitty bar called the Britisher. And, uh, yeah, some guy, you know. So the Britisher has the best sound system I've ever played on in Lancaster. Didn't I see you talking about that with somebody where it was like, you like posted a picture of somebody's old stereo and you're like, Dude, that's the Britisher. Pretty much it, man. Yeah, uh-huh. no, the Britisher. Um, now I justified that by saying it's the best sound system I've ever played in Lancaster. Cause I only played the one time. Um, it, it was one of those like Harbin, like $200 PAs yeah. with four inputs For real. from a Behringer mixer. And I think one of the inputs didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and Davey kept getting shocked from his microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how it's supposed to be. But doesn't that feel good, though? It's like old, oh, dude, old school. Dude, like, it was so fun. I would go back in a heartbeat. Yeah. The floor like, is sticky and it smells like, like swamp ass. And, and it's funny because you're playing to a wall right. and everybody's to your left. <laughs> And it's weird. Right. I would totally go right now Fuck yeah. and play it. Like it's just one of those. Every once in a while, you have to remind yourself how good you have it. No, I agree. And, I agree. Uh, and I think people get really spoiled in this town. You good? You see something? Yeah, no, no, it's all good, man. Just kind of, you know. But you guys don't, aren't here. We're um, we're doing this in the uh, the studio that we're sitting in. I'm looking out the window at this. Uh, it was kind of a smokestack on this building next to us, and there was a there was a really fucked up looking bird sitting on top of it for a minute. There. I was kind of like staring at it. I think I got lost. <laughs> anyway, oh, sorry. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about some new instruments that I've acquired since we've been on the podcast, because we do talk about music, movies, and everything in between. And I haven't seen a lot of new movies lately because well, new you know movies what? haven't been out. Let's um, let's stop right there. There's a movie called Unhinged I watched the other night. Um, it's got Fat Russell Crowe in it. I was wondering what you were talking about. Dude, Fat Russell Crowe is legit as a psychopath. Okay. He literally, but I haven't seen it. I, I was thinking about it. Um, he doesn't really play any negative roles, right? He's always like the hero or yeah. the reluctant hero or the, you know, the put upon guy or the genius or the mathematician or whatever it is. Um, but he's never like a legit psychopath. Fucking fat Russell Crowe pulls it off. And I say fat Russell Crowe cause he looks, boy looks like, like three, 
butt tree fitty. He he's eating healthy. <laughs> he's looking. He's looking. He's looking. <laughs> he's looking pretty good. Well, big. Um, but yeah, um, formulaic kind of a not not great story, but man, he his performance pulled it off. Made the whole thing like Unhinged. holy shit. Yeah, there's just one diner scene that made the whole fucking movie. All right. Well, yeah, catch it. It's on Prime or one of the pay per views. Right on. Yeah. Okay. I watched uh, The Thing recently, 2011 version. Oh, the the prequel. Yes. Uh, no, pretty, not bad. They did a pretty not, good job on it. Not bad at all. In fact, I actually saw that one first, and then I went and watched the older one. Really? And uh, and, it, and the whole story made sense. Yeah. It was great. And, and it was so cool, the attention to details from one movie to the next. You know, they really, like an axe in the wall, and then you could see it in the next movie. Right, right. Like, it, it's really, really cool. And um, is, it, is that why you're wearing a Thing hat? Uh, that just showed up the other day, and I just wanted to wear it, because... <laughs> It looks fun. Is that from one of our sponsors or that's uh, uh Ambi Dane bought this for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> we should get that guy to sponsor us. I, uh, I know, man. That guy loves spending my money. <laughs> right. Uh so if you don't know, I take uh Ambien to sleep and sometimes presents show up a couple days later <laughs> and I got this cool the thing hat. Uh but I did watch the movie. I think that's why it was on my my mind and uh and I ended up buying it, but uh, a good friend of mine and yours, Tom, he is a huge fan of that movie. Oh, this is good. They're great movies. I don't he watches think it, it like eight times a year. I don't think anybody who's seen it can, would say anything negative about it. It was just really well done. Yeah, Joey doesn't like it that much. I mean, she was like, yeah, it's okay. Really? And I'm like, it's a creature feature. Like, yeah. what do you want? <laughs> There's not a lot of plot. All you need is uh, alien shows up. It transforms into stuff. It kills people. <laughs> Okay, bye. <laughs> I, I thought it was pretty tense, man. Yeah, it's it's you're um, isolated in a place you can't get out. Way there's nowhere to go. You, your only choice is to go back in that fucking building because it's so cold. Right. I mean, I don't know. It, it's and then it, it's a who done it hmm. at that point too. So, uh, yeah, and then we're I hopefully we're gonna watch the newer one soon. And I, I realized the problem in the the 2011 version is there's no real main good actor, whereas the old one has Kurt Russell. Oh, damn, Wilford Brimley. I mean, and Wilford Brimley without the mustache, right? And so that's that's the valuable Wilford Brimley, especially if you can get him out, like still in the package. That was pre diabetes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, diabetes. <laughs> so basically, um, you know, he, he there's no real like there's the girl, but I don't know who she is, I don't know anything about her. And and as an actress, I don't know if there was really like an epic performance, but with Kurt Russell in the, in the sure. older version. And Wilford Brimley, and, and you're just like, whoa, right? Okay, uh, it wasn't Lance Henriksen was in that too, right? I think so. It, it just gave it more substance. I sure, think. sure. Um, whereas the special effects were cooler in the new one, but they did use some of the practical effects that they used back in the day because they had animatronics back then, right? Um, but that that's really it. Um, we watched Rocket Man the other night again. Yeah, good movie. Joey had never seen it. Good um, movie. That, I, I straight up, I saw that at the theater and I cried. In the theater. Really? Yep. Not going to lie, man. Oh, I was alone. If there anyone was there, I'd be like, it was allergies in here, man. But, you know, it was me. It makes me sad, dude, to yeah. think, think of you alone in a theater crying by oh, yourself. Oh, it happened. It was, <laughs> kind of makes me sad. Well, because the Rocket Man movie is very centric on Elton John's life. And then uh, apparently, according to him, at least, his, he had a shitty... Um, like parent, but his dad was a dick. Yeah, his dad was a straight up dick. Wouldn't hug him. Yeah, but then started a new family and was all lovey with them. Right, and uh, and just man, it just got me. How did I? Uh, how did Brad put put it in a uh, fight club? Oh, fucker setting up franchises, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and so, uh, and that, yeah, man, that movie gets me. And then uh, a lot of the songs, and then the AA and the depression okay. and all that stuff. And I just was like. Oh boy! Yeah, I mean, it, was, it just touched on a lot of stuff. And that's, search for love and all his uh, his uh, choice. But that dude, man, it, it, you know what? Just like the Queen movie, I forgot how many fucking great songs he had yeah. as well. I mean, I I, I never was, yeah. was really a big Elton John fan. He had a few that I really liked, but you know, after, after the movie, I'm like, wow, I forgot that was him. I forgot that was him. I forgot that was him. Every song but one in that movie, I was like, I know this song, right? And I was like. Fuck, man. Like, yeah, I just never clocked it as Elton John. I, I, just, I did the same thing with Queen with, on the, the yeah. Freddie Mercury movie. I was like, holy shit, they had a lot of really good songs. Because you know they had Bohemian Rhapsody. Right. And then... Well, there's and, probably five or six you could name right off the top of your head, and then you watch that movie, and you're like, holy shit. 
you know, I feel like um, I feel like if if and when a uh, Tom Petty movie ever comes out, we're gonna be like, holy shit, <laughs> that guy's no, got a lot no, of songs. Because I'm all I'm already well aware he's got a shit ton of songs <laughs> right. that I know. Uh, good God, I didn't even think about a Tom Petty movie. Yeah, I don't know if he's got a, like a monumental thing in his life that would make up a. They'll make one up, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, which was kind of kind of a cool segue. I, I got to interview the guy who put Tom Petty on the radio on this podcast one time. Yeah, so that's actually a great show. If you guys are um, looking, check out in the um, in the archives on the website. Um, I can't really remember what his name was. John Scott. So it's a great. It's a really good episode. Listen to that guy's stories. Are it's it's entertaining. And uh, he wrote a book called Tom Petty and Me, and. Uh, just fantastic. It was, I read the whole book in one day and I've never done that with any book. And, uh, yeah, just powered through the whole thing. It was, it was amazing. Great yeah. stories. Real funny. Tom seemed like one of the coolest dudes ever. I think I did that with 50 shades of gray. I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> one day, <laughs> one package of paper towels. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now before I sidetracked you on the movie thing, you were going. You were telling. You want to um, talk about uh, musical instruments? Musical or? instruments. So, so I've I've had some time this year with no shows and all that stuff, and I've had a little extra money because I'm sitting around and stimulus checks and all that, and I've been working still, so it's been nice to have a little extra money. And uh, I thought, you know, I'm gonna start getting some things I know will really help round out some of my tastes, I guess. I don't want to brag, but I didn't get a stimulus check. <sighs> yeah, that's great. I think I just did. Bruh. <laughs> you got it in other ways. You know, and smiles and and hugs. Anyway, so I got uh <laughs> that, that was a humble brag, by the way. <laughs> I'm so rich I don't need one. No, that's that's great, man. We all should be so fortunate. <laughs> so, uh, don't look at me like that. I swear, where were we? Don't look at me like that. So, anyway, no, I've I've been trying to find like so. I've always been trying to find like that sound that I want, and I had an idea of where it is. And uh, so for me, it was like Les Paul and an orange amp was the sound I love. It's something I I just really really dig, and then. I'm in a band that does some cover songs, and a lot of the songs are more single coil, a little more like Fender sounding. So I bought me a Fender guitar, and I'm not a big fan of Fender guitars because I just think they look goofy as fuck. Yeah, I've heard you say that a dozen times. I've heard you say that about Stratocasters, and it makes no sense to me. They're amazing guitars. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying they don't play well and sound good. I just think they are awful to look at. I feel the same way about Swedish guitars. Oh. <laughs> well, at least they don't have that weird, goofy shape. Anyway, uh, so I bought a Fender Jaguar, which had... Uh, <laughs> which is, happens to be the ugliest guitar the, that Fender makes. The ugliest looking, most amoebic shaped <laughs> guitar that they and have. And it's got, it's got little switches and all kind of... And, and but, but I've realized it has all the things I need to, to go back and forth everywhere I go. Um, cause I'm in, I'm in a couple of different bands and so I think you bought it just so, so you could feel like you were edgy. So I'm just flexing, man. You're trying to be edgy at this point. So the Fender Jag is, is the way I went. And then I bought a, a Helix so I could get rid of all these damn guitar pedals that I kept buying nonstop because <laughs> I think I had $3,000 in guitar yeah, pedals. Yeah. I wonder what the trade off is. Did you make back enough on selling them at a loss that you could at least pay for your Helix? Yep. Oh, that's good. That's like half pro not yes. loss. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm rocking a, a Helix, which has all the amps I need in it, and and uh, and I've got this new guitar, which I I've been enjoying quite a bit. Uh, but I I feel like such a fucking sellout with Fender because I just talk I, shit I, on them for twenty years. I like your guitar. I think it's cool. I would never have one because I just it would be uncomfortable to me. But the, um, the only Knock I had, I mean, it plays beautifully. Only knock I had was the um, there's a radius on the fingerboard, and that's a weird feeling for me. It felt alien. To, what does that to, mean? It just there's, doesn't, there's no radius. Does that not make sense to you? No, no, I don't mm. know. I actually never knew what a radius on the fingerboard meant. No, no arch, 
So the, the the fingerboard itself has an arch? Uh, yeah, well, yours doesn't. That's the thing. It's completely oh. flat, and it feels weird. It feels a little strange. Okay. From what I'm used to. I, there's something about it just, I felt like I was, not that I fingered your guitar that much, but. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well I'm sure everybody's bored about me bragging about this stuff. So anyway, um, I got uh, a bass the other day from from somebody, and it was a used bass. It's an Ibanez SR670. Gorgeous fucking. I, you bass, know, I've man. seen the bass that you're talking about, and I know I know where it came from. That um, yeah, that thing is a badass. It's it a is freaking beast. And I used to have a um, I used to have a, what was the Schecter? I used to have a Schecter bass that had active pickups in it, and I haven't played anything with active pickups since then. I wish I had never got rid of that bass. It was so good. Um, but I just, I was moving and I didn't have the room or something. And uh, it was the Schecter Diamond Series uh, Griffin 4 bass, is what it was. And I haven't been able to find anything quite like it since then. Um, this is the closest I've ever come. And this is actually probably better than that one. And uh, this isn't, the, the Ibanez is so cool and it's got these active pickups and it's just sound wise, it's totally amazing. Great, great bass. But <laughs> it looks like it has been used a little bit, which is good because when you have an instrument, you should use it. But uh, well, and you play in a punk rock band, so I mean, well, I was trying to tell you the story earlier. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe you'll get it out now. <laughs> so basically, somebody here's my assumption of what happened <laughs> based on the, somebody based on the scratches on on the instrument. Here's what I I can assume happened. Uh, somebody had a little bit too much Johnny Walker uh, or Glenn Levitt's. <laughs> the Jameson. The Jameson. Yeah. Uh, cask mates. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, somebody somebody had it. And uh, he, you know how there's, you know, the necks are bolt on or screw on mm-hmm. necks. Uh, I assume they either were making adjustments or reattaching the guitar to itself and Missed about seven times with the screwdriver. Like surgery with a butter knife kind of thing. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) It was one of those like, maybe if I close one eye, (laughs) nope, nope, missed it again. (laughs) Um, But again, it's it's all out of love, man. Like it's whoever was doing the the thing too. Well, you know who was doing it. It's a guy who came to the podcast with chicken wings and a (laughs) bottle of whiskey. So we'll just leave it at that (laughs) without saying any names. (laughs) But he's also hooking me up on... On that base, I think so it's, it's so cool, um, man. It's funny that you bring that up because I, I, I was actually had another story I was going to bring to the podcast to talk about, um, and it kind of segues from, like nicely from what you were saying. What's here, dude? We um, you were you were mentioning to me the other day about you had busted out your old Les Paul and you started playing it again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm in this quandary, and this uh, and it's really a weird spot to be. I I fucked around and let myself get tucked into buying. A really, really expensive Les Paul custom a few years ago. Um, like way too expensive. Like we were on the hunt for that thing. Yeah. Um, well, I finally found it and I've got one of what was it, like six or something? One like? out of 25. 25, yeah. Um, really, really rare. So only 25 of these were made. Yeah. Really rare, really expensive. Um, I, I've taken it out, and gigged with it a few times. Um, what was the name of it? What kind? Scorpion. A scorpion. Yeah. Les Paul Scorpion. Yeah. Look it up. Yeah, very cool. So, so I've got this guitar and I love it. it. Plays great, sounds good. It's got all the features I wanted. Had everything set up the way I wanted it. So it's perfect, except it's really rare and it's really really expensive. And every time I play it, I'm afraid of it because I don't want to do some damage to it. So here's where my quandary. And this is where I'm stuck at. As like I said, I've gigged with it two or three times, and there is in the clear coat. Some little tiny pick scratches. Was there not when you got it? No, no, no it was pristine. Um, oh, really? Mint condition, um, which was why it was so fucking expensive, right? Right. So um, it's not that there's any damage to the paint. It's just the top of the clear cut. There's this tiny little like flutters of where my picks tapped it because mm-hmm. gigs you play sure. harder than when you would just be sitting in your studio, right? Um, and that terrifies me because I know just having those in there fucks with the value. And I know I could probably find some paint products or some clear coat product that I can buff them out and, you know, get things, which in itself terrifies me <laughs> because I don't want to leave like right. some swirl marks and, you know, in the clear coat and then that's oh, fuck. They can't get that out. Um, but what I've been wondering lately is I saw this stuff 
and they have these new products out that are um, ceramic nanoparticles. That's not yeah, high tech, right? Um, it's built for car paint, which is essentially the same stuff that's on your guitar, right? It's a yeah, give or take lacquer and a clear coat, right? So they have this stuff, and it's um, it's kind of what they're building all the new scratch removers and all that stuff out of. Um, just minuscule little nanoparticles built of some ceramic um, material, and you just rub it in, and it fills and smooths out the clear coat. And you can never there was never a scratch. There was never any blemish. And my dilemma is, do I buy it and try it on a fucking really, really expensive? I don't even tell you how much the guitar was. No, you try it. <laughs> you try it on your fucking Schecter first. <laughs> yeah, well, I was thinking maybe I would just, um, you know, I, I know this guy's got a bunch of Swedish guitars. So I would come and put some marks on one of those and... You want to try it on one of my guitars? <laughs> no, oh, no, great. No, I, I, I know you're still you're still wounded over the damage I did here. That Ibanez soft body that you had. Oh man. So, but anyway, yeah, I just I'm stuck because I really want to, and that's again, if I do this and I repair it, or or, or not even repair it, but just fix these little tiny marks, and I'm still afraid of playing it. So I'm going to have it just sitting there in my studio, and I'll be like, oh, wow, look, there's that fucking beautiful guitar with that awesome sound that I don't really want to play. And it's starting to bug me. But I don't know if I want to sell it. I mean, it's worth a lot of money. I could probably, with the money, buy a bunch of other stuff I want. But I don't know. I don't know what to do. So, I'm kind of in a weird situation with it. So it's it's an interesting way to look at it, because for me, it uh, you convinced me when you were looking for this guitar. You were like, no, man, you buy a guitar to play it. You don't buy a guitar to let it sit. And of course, mine's not one of 25. Right. But mine is one of a thousand. So, I mean, it's still not rare, rare, but it is rare-ish. It's expensive. I know that. That's pretty rare. Um, And so, oh, somebody's doing something over there. It's that fucking ugly bird. Also. That, ugly bird <laughs> that ugly bird just fell off the roof. This is what we ought to call this ugly bird studio. Joey, Joey makes fun of how I say roof. <laughs> She's like, no, it's roof. Not roof. <laughs> Tell you from fucking Montana. You pronounce roof. it how you want to pronounce roof. it. <laughs> so um, I have this nice guitar. And when I, okay, so I, when I first bought the guitar was in 2009. It was the year that Les Paul died. It was the very last one he actually had any say over at all. Not that he really had much say anyway, but in my opinion, a lot of the newer, because I've owned a couple of the newer Gibsons, they, they don't hold up. They're just not as good feeling. I don't I mean, know. So, you like to think that Les actually like yeah, went, it, went into the factories it, and touched yours. It's probably said, a this head, one. <laughs> dude, it's probably a head thing, but like for me, it just doesn't feel as well built now. And this was 2009, so that was what, 12 years ago. Uh, I bought this brand new. It cost me twenty two hundred bucks. It was the most amazing thing I ever owned in my life, guitar wise, and it was the ultimate thing. And I would play it very lightly at home for recordings, and then I would wipe it down with like a diaper. I wouldn't touch it, you know. What I mean, I'd get all the residue off the strings, and um, and then I would put it back in the case, and I put like a cloth over it. And uh, that's where that's where I'm at. Okay, so twenty two hundred dollars, and that was at the time I think it was making like. 35 grand a year. So like that was a huge deal. Sure, sure. And so uh I had it for about a year. Not a scratch on it. Like everything was pristine. Sold it because I needed the money for rent because I had I had gotten out of the military and But just everybody has one of the stories in their life. I got like, like ten of them. It's man. like the fucking biggest regret story ever. Dude, so so I, I sold it for twelve hundred dollars a year later. <laughs> I took a huge hit on it, a thousand dollar hit. Just and 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 there shouldn't have even been that big of a hit, but I needed the money. Yeah. And so, like, I was desperate. Guitar Center was like, yeah, we'll give you 500 bucks for it. And I was like, uh. whatever, dude. So, I mean, they're basically just a glorified pawn shop right. uh, when you get their used stuff. So, anyway, um, I sold it. It was one of the biggest regrets I ever had, but I, I didn't have a lot of money for the next six or seven years. Finally, you know, things started looking better for me. And then, and then a couple of years, I think it was two years ago I bought this. So I bought the same year, the same model. It's not the same serial number, but the same guitar. And it already had it had two chips in it. And it fucking pissed me off because I was like, who does this? 
you psychopath. <laughs> like, and, and then. But did you feel like it freed you up to just play it more? Because well, you're like, all right, well, it's fucking pre damaged. Well, and that's the thing, too, is like, you know, I started making a little bit more money. <laughs> so I, I felt a little more comfortable. If something ever happened to it, could I possibly get another one? Yeah, if I had to. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was it was ultimately it was talking to you about it. Like, look, man, you're not just going to buy an expensive guitar and not play it, you know, or not like that's what they're for. And so, it, yeah, I think having it pisses me off because I would have rather been the one to chip it, which I wouldn't have. But because that other one just stayed in that case all the time, it never got played. It never got shown. It never, you know, it just sat in this case. It, I used it for like three recordings and that was it. And they're not even good recordings. Well, I think that's so, that's where I'm at with this thing. I love it, um, and I took it out and played a few gigs with it, but I've gotten to the point now where I'm terrified of it. I'm afraid of my own guitar, and that's yeah. sad. I mean, it's, it, not, it's sad. You, just get rid of it, man. I'm thinking about it. I'm yeah, just, lo- dude, like, I, I hate saying that because it's one of the most beautiful guitars. Are you going to offer me 1200 bucks for it? Yeah, 1200 bucks. <laughs> Boom, done. I, I, I'm actually thinking about it. Can I make it. payments? <laughs> I know. I just I don't know what to, I don't know what to do. I... I I, I I think that's where I'm at is now I'm just telling you I, I've, I've had mine out. I don't wipe it down every time now. I just play it and enjoy it. Um, dude, it, it's either a guitar you love or it's a guitar you don't love. But it's weird that I that I came full circle on that. Right? Was like, it an investment? Here I was talking to you about it, telling you just to go out and fucking play it. You know, forget the rarity, forget all that. And it's and I don't think it's that I'm afraid of losing value. I'm just afraid of. I'm afraid of damaging something that's right. It's, it's like it's, I don't know, I don't know. Probably not, should have never made the purchase, but what can he do? Now I've got well, it. I'm it, stuck with this. You were obsessed with getting it. Too, I, I was for maybe a year. You well, were I, I, I wanted it. and I slowly talked myself into it. You know, like hey, why not, man? Just get a nice guitar, get something you're gonna really rock. And then I found that one, and I was like, oh god, it's a, it's a fucking unicorn. I gotta get it. You know, right, right. And then I got, I had some some people give me advice, tell me, you know, hey. Just, Stop handicapping yourself, buy something you love and enjoy it, which makes perfect fucking sense if you think about it, you know? I think it's a shame to not see it out at gigs. I think it's a shame that you're not playing it much. I know. So where I'm at is I've got this really nice guitar, and the only evidence of it is it's like in my Facebook profile. Yeah, picture. I took that picture. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty <laughs> much, so you know I had it. It's real. Yeah, but that's yeah. pretty much as far as And I think go. I've played mine about the same amount of gigs as yours, but... I yeah. would play it more. I just I found a different guitar that sounded better with the band I was yeah. in. I don't think I'm going to bring it out anymore. And I don't I don't know. Maybe it'll just be a studio fucking unicorn that just stays there, or maybe at some point I'll 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 buy this nanogo particles, dude. Just clean it up and sell it. Just get a a freaking hyperbaric chamber case for it <laughs> and just right. mount it on the wall. You know, it, it should be looked at at least, or just get rid of it and buy a, a badass PRS or something that you will play all the time. Right, you know, I, and and maybe not that higher, you know, that high of a dollar item, but just something that is the feel that you've always wanted, right? You know, and just go and play all those all those good ones. You know, maybe out there. maybe I'll just hang on to it for another five years and then trade it for a Corvette or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? well, and, and that's the thing too is like it's always going to be worth money, even if you nicked it, even if you have some playing marks in it, it's still a, it's still a one of twenty five, right. whether it's played or not. Uh, I don't even know if you can find them out there that are played, though. Have you? Have you I haven't done any searching since, but I mean, God, how long did you and I both look? I mean, we scoured Austin, top to bottom. <laughs> we went to every guitar <laughs> shop and even called the high end right. Gibson store. I um, no, but I think I looked for probably a year or more, you know, and then just happened yeah. to run. In fact, the, the place I got it was uh, Kansas City Custom Guitars, and that guy was like, Yeah, I've never seen one before. So they're out there, but, you know, people are keeping them, the collectors are keeping them. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And and maybe, I mean, if you want to look at it as, a, as an investment, then yeah, don't play it. Right. Well, I don't. I, I just, I'm stuck. Urgh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately, um, I play all my guitars and the ones that I stop playing or just don't play much anymore. Like I had this Red Hagstrom that I played a lot, but now I have a guitar that kind of replaces that one. I don't have a need for it and it's just taking up space and I'd rather somebody play it. So I... Dished it out to someone else for real cheap. You sold your Hexstrom? Eh, ish. He has it. Okay. And, you know, whatever. So, but but I have enough guitars to where that's that's okay. Right, right. You know, and I have plenty of things that do the same things that one does. So that's where the Fender Jaguar comes in because that one kind of covers all that Hexstrom weird stuff. 
Uh, and hey, you're I've, the only guy I know who's uh, got a, actually has a Swedish guitar collection. That's why I always always mention it. I might not soon. I have a Hagstrom bass for sale if anyone's looking. <laughs> and uh, but but the I will say I have a Hagstrom uh, six string uh, Pat Smear model, and that thing is. I hate I hate saying it's it's like the workhorse guitar for me. It, it's got a great sound. I love it, and it has a good fretboard. Right? <laughs> it's it's very bizarre. It was not something I expected. I thought it would be cool for a bit, you know. And it actually has the two little horns like an SG would have, and I hate those. Really? It's just oh, I hate that look so much, man. I'll take a Les Paul any day. In fact, Hagstrom makes super Swedes, which look like Les Pauls kind of. I should have got one of those, but I love they, this they, one they so look like much. Les Pauls only they have a really good suntan, right? What's that? The Super Swedes. The Super Swedes. <laughs> really good suntan, and they <laughs> smell like fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of Swedish things. Uh, chefs. <laughs> I know they're always blonde, right? All the Swedes are sure, blonde, blonde sure. with suntans, and they all fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots of fish. <laughs> I don't know what else. <laughs> Um, so yeah, basically I, I found, you know, this, this Pat Smear, which is funny to say his name, his stage name. I don't know his real name. I think it's Pat Smear, as far as I know. No, it's not. He, he plays in the Foo Fighters now, but he was in a band called the Germs and he was in Nirvana for a bit. Um, but he's, he's actually the biggest Hagstrom collector in the world. So they made a model for him. Which is cool. Um, I bet Smear is Swedish for something. He's probably yeah. he's probably Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think he was just trying to find a name close to Pap Schmear. <laughs> so uh, for some reason, like even on my recordings at home lately, I'm like, fuck, man, this this weird obscure, you know, guitar is is badass, dude. Right. It's something about the 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 pickups that they make or something. Hey, it, so um, I think not to, to go off the top of gear, but let's talk about your album. It, it finally came out. I think the last time we did this, we, we had mentioned that it was possibly coming out and it was something to look forward to. And now it lives. Yeah. It, it is a living, breathing thing. Um, I think maybe we should, we should, uh, we should mention it, maybe play a tune or so off of it. I, I feel like I was honored enough to, to play a little bit of guitar on it. So, in fact, I think I played the Hextrum on there, right? Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, and for sure, yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll let, let's play the tune that, uh, that you were on as well. Okay, I love that. Uh, which is a song, it's, it, I wouldn't say it's the best song on the album, but it is definitely one of my favorites because it has um, female backing vo- vocals, or uh, and, and then you've got your guitar playing on there for the leads and you know it's a song that i wrote a long time ago uh i think i was deployed my third time to iraq and it was um it was about pretending you're in a relationship even though you're not because you're so far away you know you you start falling for somebody but you're separated so you for a year so you have to pretend that you're not and it's tough man it's a really tough situation and then you wonder after a while because then Especially if you have trust issues, you wonder what's what's going on. You know, I'm so far away. I only hear from them for 20 minutes a day. What's going on in their life? Things like that. And you, you start questioning things in your head. So anyway, uh, yeah, so we'll play pretending for you guys. Here you go. to me were true I tried to ignore 
So that was Pretending by Desert Danish. So the new album is called The Desert Never Sleeps, and it's got eight tracks on it. Um, all of them were recorded in my living room, and I I learned a lot. And it was over the course, course of a year and a half, um, except for, oh, there was live drums on Red Rooster Cafe that I recorded down at our old spot before we, before we broke up. But uh, the bird up there again? Yeah, actually. <laughs> Damn you, bird. <laughs> um, so basically, that album uh, is is an album I've been trying to put out for like, 10 years, something like that. Uh, a few of the songs are newer, but uh, I have other songs that didn't make it that I've just been like trying to find a voice, find what I'm trying to do musically. And this was kind of that, that first step. And I have a lot that I want to read not rework, but I, I want to learn upon what I did in that album and move forward. Cause now I have a little bit better mics. I have a little bit better idea of where my voice can go. Well, sure. But I think you did the important thing here is you find, you broke your paralysis. You, we, we, we all do that. And especially solo artists like that, you, you'll be, well, yeah, I have this song. It's complete, but I want to do this better. Or I want to rewrite this. Or I want to run a re- You got to get it out. And you did it. You finally just threw it off and, and recorded the fucking album and got it out there. And that, that's that's great. Dude. From there, that gives you so much room to grow. Otherwise, you don't. You just sit there and constantly rework these same songs until they're... Beat to death. Yeah. And then, I mean, they some of them may come out just amazing. And some may come out like shit because you overworked them. So, I mean, it's it's good. Yeah. And, and thank you. And it, it just kind of like... If I didn't have somebody there helping me, a life coach pushing me along, <laughs> uh, if you don't know, Brian texted me about every two weeks or so saying, hey, man, where are you at with the album? And if he hadn't been, a lot of times I would have just pushed it to the side for six more months and then just re- redone all the stuff. And then I have about 12 versions of some of those songs that I've done over the last 10 years. And I'm like, yeah, it's all right. But now that I've learned the process a lot more, and and it, it kind of shows, like in my head at least, when I listen to the songs on the album, I'm like, oh, I remember when I recorded that one. That was like at the very beginning before I realized what I should have done. Right, right. And then there's other songs where I'm like, wow, spot on, beautiful. Like, you know, because a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just record uh, vocals and guitar at the same time because I don't really go to a click very often. It's just as long as I'm in my head, I, I know my, what do we call it with Scott? Mac and timing. Mac and timing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's basically like as long as I'm in time in my head, I'm I'm good to go. And that works if you're just doing one take all the way through with both, you know, vo- voice and, and the instrument. But then you have to have someone who either knows you really well or you playing on drums and all that other stuff. So for Red Rooster Cafe, which was one of the songs on the album... Uh, I stupidly did that and then did not do another track over it, you know, where I just played guitar and then just sang. And so what happened is, and I started there because that song is generally just played on an acoustic guitar. It's like a campfire tune. But for some reason, I wanted drums in it just kind of lightly in the background. And I wasn't going to be the one mixing the song. And so I did all the recording and sent it off to Chuck. 
and my friend Chuck was going to basically mix and master the the song. Uh, and then he he looked at me crazy when I sent it to him, and he's like, "What the fuck? None of the, or he played bass on it too." And he's like, this is not in time at all. And I said, yeah, man, I felt the vibe. You know, I just went with it. And uh, the drums were in sync to what I was doing, but they were not in sync to the the click. Uh, and so if you guys don't know, the metronome goes like, or, or however you want to have it, you can have a click. Or uh, some of them are like a little beep. Right. Um, so he didn't normalize it, right? I mean, he still just mixed it. Oh, he had... normalized it. And really? Painstakingly, I'm sure. I wasn't there, so wow. I don't know. Uh, but just so just so it would sound right to him. So did you... I, I don't know if I showed you this or not, not to change the topic. I saw a, um, a thing popped up across social media the other day. Um, it was Running with the Devil by Van Halen. Okay. Normalized. All right. It's fucked up. It's The only way I can put it is... That song, uh, dude, I'll, I'll have to send it to you. You guys that are out there, look it up. Just look it up on, um, I think I saw it on Facebook, maybe. Um, look up Running With The Devil, Normalized. Normalized. And it, it's not the same song. Did they, did they just live track that or something? I think they just, I, I mean, I don't know how they did it. In this. That was 1976, maybe. Um, and I guess they just did it off whatever, you know, the, the drum track. It, it's amazing how... Fucked up it sounds when you when you put it in the correct timing. So, so I that, hope that didn't happen with, that's with Red Rooster Cafe, which sounds uh, sounded pretty good to me. The, you know, the mix I, I heard. I was I was on, but I was a little off here and there. So I I think I had a click in my head, but I was drumming louder than I could hear it. So I think there's a few times where I skip a one beat here and there. <laughs> you have that crazy drum fill thing going on that you had on that last song? <laughs> so in the last song, the last song is really, really good. The, I, I'm not a drummer, and I hate programming drums, which to me should have said, find somebody who does program drums or play drums right. or don't have them in there. And so that's one of the lessons I learned because that song is great, but that drum, tr- like I just grabbed a few different drum loops from Easy Drummer <laughs> and I could have adjusted, but I just got lazy and I was like, right. ah, fuck, man, I hate drums. So, I you know, back to what you were saying earlier on all these, dude, they're, if nothing else, at least you have the bass lines for them all now. And, and if you've got this... You've got like a, a root level thing that you can always go back to and you can say, okay, I like the way I approach that or I like the way I I um I I express myself in that song and you can use that on different different takes of it or as you move forward and you record new songs, you're like, Okay, I really like the the approach I took when I recorded this one. Yeah. And it'll kind of evolve yourself that way. Yeah, and, and so what what's really cool now is is I have a process because it took eight songs and now I have this process and I'm like, okay, I know I know what needs to go where and it's never a perfect process and they're not all gonna work like this, but you know, sometimes you just want that guitar and vocal playing to yourself without sure. a click. I mean, sometimes you need to feel or, or go a little longer with certain notes. But there's other songs that just have that structure. And now I know, okay, I can do like a scratch track. And then once I get that good, I can record each part over it and then be in sync and then not go too nuts with the drums. And no, I I, obviously I need to pull the drums back a lot more. And because I don't, I don't know how to mix and master all that well either. So this was all just me testing the waters. I, I think it's growth and it happens for everybody. So the, um, my best first album that we put out, we, um, we recorded that in a specific process with a specific producer and everything was, um, I would say fairly linear. Um, so when we did it, we kind of got in our heads that this is how you record. This is your method. It was our first album. Um, so none of us had like a whole lot of experience in recording other stuff. And we got this idea in our head that this is how you do it. Um, and we generally liked it, but there was parts of it where we're like, ah, oh, that's uh, that could have been done better. We could have redone that or we could have done things better right. this way. Of course, like we were just saying, you can always do that, right? You just got to get it out. But, um, we're recording a whole slew of other songs now with a different producer, and it's it's turned a different approach. Um, it's, it's if I told you, you would think it's crazy because no one does it the way we're doing it now with this guy. Um, I mean, we're literally like writing pieces in the studio, which you never do. You know, you sh- you come in prepared. We well, we all should be so fortunate to write in a studio. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. So um, and have the engineer just sitting there, right, giving us tips, and uh, yeah. it's it's. 
it's different, but it's fun. I mean, it's made recording yeah. a lot more fun than it was prior, where it was just you're kind of nervous because you want to play it perfect because you're recording. You know, the tape's rolling. You got to get it right. This has been, it's kind of cool. There's like three or four of us sitting there in the studio um, playing it. And we're like, hey, wait, man, what if you threw this on there? Because this would add a little more punch or this would give it a, a little more emotional turnaround or whatever. You know, just like little so things. And it's producing for real. Producing. Yeah, it's it's been cool. Um, a new approach for us, obviously, but I would say cool. Yeah. So I've been, uh, I subscribe to NoFX's Patreon. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Patreon, whatever. Um, and so they're writing an album right now. And they're live streaming their process, basically. So not the whole thing, but, you know, like, hey, we're going to practice for, you know, a couple hours. We're going to turn on the, the cameras and you guys can check it out. And and then at the end of it, they, they talk and answer questions and stuff, too. And then they're tracking stuff. So they have the drums in the studio and then this and that. And it's like, it's been interesting. I, I'm watching it out of intrigue more than anything because it's a band I really like, but also... To see how they're doing right, what like they're doing. Part of the process. That's never been so available to me where I'm like, fuck, I actually can watch how they're doing this. I learned so much and I think it's only been like three videos that I've watched so far. But yeah, I'll just turn it on in the background and just kind of sure. pick up stuff as I work or whatever. But it's been uh it was really cool. They were talking about they're trying a new process for this album. It's like their sixteenth album, you know, so they're I think they're just they're just doing it to do it at this point, you know, or they have a rhythm down at least because mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the songs sound very similar to a lot of older albums that they have. But um, they said what they're doing is they're they're doing two songs, practicing two songs, and then going to the studio and recording those two songs, and then they're going to write the other two songs and then go to the studio. And just Which, keep- wow! So we looked into their process now on our second album. So <laughs> that's essentially we're doing the same kind of thing, um, so like one and two at a time. Um, it's been. For us, great. Uh, on the whole, like I said, we're, we're actually writing pieces in there and we're getting fresh stuff out. But I would say some of our guys find it, well, it's alien because it's not something that we did before. So it's a new a new process. So there's a bit of an acceptance level oh, for there. sure. You know, it's yeah. like, no, no, we should we need to write them all and then go into the studio and write the album. Well, no, I don't think it works that way. I think a lot of people have done that. I, yeah. think, I think what what you run into a lot of is like that first album, you had 10 years to write that. Right. You know, you didn't know you were doing that, but you know, you had all that time to get these songs together. And then you finally said, Hey, let's go to this, the studio and record these. But you had it all down. You had it all worked out. Well, with the second one, it's kind of like you don't have all that time anymore. And if you do spend all that time on it, you're just going to keep second guessing stuff right. or, or wanting to change it. And that's what no effects was talking about. And they said, I said, we're just, we want to find what what sounds really good and just do it, and then we you know we can add a, a little bit here and there, but the song is what it is, and we want to keep that. Um, well, I think there's a there's a different paradigm all the way around as well. It's not just it's not just like it used to be where you would you would get a collection of music and you put these songs together and then release an album. We're in this age where you're you're going for attention span. You got eight seconds to grab somebody, so your intro's got to be great, and then. You have to put out music regularly enough that you want to kind of be recording on ones and yeah. twos, so you can drop you can drop two every every couple of months or or one one a month. Or, Is that crazy? You kind of have to do that at this point. That's how it works, man. That's the society we become. I mean, we're we're like I said, the average is um, eight seconds to get somebody. You know, your song comes on their their Spotify or their SoundCloud or whatever it is. You got eight seconds to have them. Go, okay, I'm going to listen to more of this, or they're just click next, click next. And you're like, my heart is in that. Yeah, it is, but <laughs> you, that's, you know, yeah. And, and that's the thing, too, is I, I don't have a lot of listeners. So for me, it's just like, well, it's out there. Yeah. Maybe someone will find it someday. Well, you know, and that's the thing, right? Yeah. So that comes down to, at least for us, is not hoping to be famous from it sure it's kind of like this is what we want to do so this is why we're doing it and we're going to put this stuff yeah. out maybe like if we're trying to get on a big show or we're trying to get on a tour or we're trying to get onto a um i guess some big gig that's coming up we want to play with another band we could send our album and go hey look this is what we sound like and that's really what it is it's just a it's a record a recording quote unquote of what what we sound like to get us out there, it's not so much we're going to sell a bunch of albums and make money off them because those days are gone. Right, right, right. It's just to get into some shows or to to find a way to further our band, however that's going to be nowadays. 
Yeah, and and so for me, I'm not I'm not looking to be famous, but I wouldn't mind twenty listeners a month. That, that, that doesn't seem like a big reach. Well, you know what would be cool is some feedback. Just we had enough fans out there listening to your stuff that to, every time you put something out, you got a thing from them saying, yeah. "Hey, man, this is really cool," or "Wow, I didn't like this song," or "I really love this song." Just some feedback like and, that. And that's the thing too cool. is not a lot of not a lot of I didn't like this song comes back to me. And uh, obviously, people are being nice and they're being supportive, and I love that about them. But there is times where I'm like, just give it to me straight, man. Like I try to do that with with my friends' bands. And I feel like I come off like a dick all the time. And I try, I talked to my, my buddy Ryan about it with his uh, Four Seers band. And I said, you know, if something sounds off or weird, I tell him. Because I'm like, I don't know, man. It just sounds a little like, hey, if you like it, right on. But it's just not my thing. <laughs> Believe me, I know. I, I, I'm kind of notorious for that, telling my friends bands. And I think I, I think I picked <laughs> it up from watching you do it. And I'm like, I'm like uh, you know... It, it, there, there's being nice and then there's being like supportive, but still being able to, if yeah. it's asked, like if I ask you, hey man, what do you think? I really want to know. If you could be like, I don't know, man, sounds like you half asked it. I'd be like, yeah, I did. <laughs> I mean, straight up, right? I know what I did. I can own my shit, uh, but it's the best you're going to get from it right now. So, what my take yeah. is if I tell you that, if I tell you it sounds like you half asked it and you can't accept that, then why fucking ask? Right. I mean, why even bother? I'm not going to lie to you and tell you, man, that was golden. You sounded so good when your voice cracked on that. Yeah, fucking oh, wow. Hundo P, man. I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, and even now when I hear some of the songs and I'm like, ha, ha. <laughs> good Lord, how did I How did I just say, yep, that's cool. And I'll tell you why I did say that was cool. Because I played the guitar and sang at the same time. Right. So when I go to, to pull my voice down, the guitar goes down. And right. I'm like, fuck. I, and that's, that's where the half-ass part came in. <laughs> so... Um, I think Red Rooster does it on one one word. I'm like, <laughs> or whatever. So um, since we're on the topic, we might as well put it out there. I mean, we're talking about all these albums that we all just put out and, our, you know, ongoing ventures. Let's tell the people that a uh, little clap on the back then got signed to a, a label. I did. I um, am on Punkerton Records now. Congratulations. Man. Uh, they are out of Ohio, which I'm not sure I'll ever make it to. But maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll have a big reunion show or something again. <laughs> um, it's really cool. Um, this he's a veteran, uh, just like myself, and um, he was so I found him through um, he was looking for people for a compilation album to help for to go towards save our stages, uh, because of the whole pandemic. A lot of a lot of venues have shut down, and that fucking sucks. I get it though. Um, but this is money to go towards that. I just bought a uh, shirt from those guys. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Nice. I, I think I bought five at this point. <laughs> nice. But just because I want the money to go to something really cool. Right. So he was putting out a compilation album. Uh, he had just started this record label up. I think he had uh, Pearl Street Riot is one of the bands that were on there. And I think he had Wesley Joe is the other person. And, um, and I, I watched a movie a lot growing up called Salt Lake City Punk. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. Was, SLC Punk. Yeah, SLC yeah. Punk. Yeah. Um, Look at everybody watch that. It was Matthew Lillard's first movie. Right, right. So it's like Matthew Lillard is in it and Dave, Devin Sawa. Right. And uh, I forget who else. Is I heard they're there. actually making a second one, too, at they some did. point. They already made it. Yeah. Um, and it's different. Um, but anyway, I follow the director. I think is I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I think it's James Marandino, something like that. Um Anyway, he he posted from Punkerton Records. He shared it, saying, "Hey, this is a compilation for anybody that that sings like cowboy punk type stuff." And I thought about, it. "Wow, that's me." <laughs> and I, well, well, I started thinking about like what genre do I play, and I was like, "Yeah, that kind of fits in there." Doesn't well, you it? got that devil song that fits cowboy <laughs> punk pretty well, the ganjo disaster yeah. song. So and, you know, and, and I play folk. And some of the folk I play is a little darker and I'm like, yeah, it'll fit. Um, so I, I talked to the guy and I said, here's three songs that I've recorded. I, it just happened to be around the time I was about to put an album out. So I had all these recordings and I said, Hey, yeah, pick whatever one you like, man. And he goes, Oh, I'm going to pick one that you sent. That's not really the genre I'm looking for, but it's so damn good. I can't, I can't not put this on there. And it was burning these bridges. Right on, dude. That's a great time. And it's a real song. It, it doesn't, there's no fluff in it. It's just straight up. It's it's a very me to the core kind of song, and it you know it's got a lot of revealing things that I don't like to talk it's about. It's a little dark, but it's uh, it's a good song. I even I feel like it's a good song. 
And I remember the first time I played it live, you came up to me and said, what the fuck? That was a great song. Yeah. Um, so I sent it to him and he goes, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm putting it on this, this compilation. I said, cool, right on. And he goes, hey, if you're interested, I'm starting a record label and we'd love to have you on there. And so that's kind of how it went, man. And I said, yeah, absolutely, dude. I, you know, I've got all 12 fans here in Ridgecrest, <laughs> right. Rich Tucky, right. and, uh, and one in England. And uh, I said, you know what? What could it hurt? You know, I, I'd love to be on this label and, and be represented by somebody who's, not only a veteran, but also someone who's interested in helping save music stages. No, kind of aligned to your same kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And cool. so so we were very much in tune with each other. And I had run a small label before. So I had a lot of, here's what you shouldn't do. Sure, sure. <laughs> I don't know what you're supposed to do, but I know what you're supposed to not do. So I can tell you that much. That bird still got your attention, man? No, no. <laughs> no, no. Something new now. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i'm on a record label and it's super cool and it's super weird to not be the one who owns the label <laughs> because i've always put out put out well always once uh, i put out my own stuff or i put out stuff for other bands and it's very bizarre for me to i don't know like give up the reins kind of you know what i mean because and, and especially was was interesting because he i already had the record done like i could have just put it out Sure. You know, but I wanted to align forces with this guy and you might as well you maybe he can get you some uh some some traction some somewhere. Desert day nights. S- well some place that you wouldn't, you know, necessarily have already been. You yeah, know? Exactly, exactly. And I'm super pumped for my future there. So um that aside, I mean so that's a that's a huge thing. That's that's the last well, when did your album come out? A month ago? Uh it was March 20th, World Storyteller Day. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, a few weeks ago. That's yeah. freaking fantastic. That's uh, it's part of this thing that I've been, um, this is going to sound weird and I don't want to sound cheesy to all, to all of our people, but a lot of you guys know me. Um, this year has been so fucking dark, right? Um, 2020, we went through everything. We went through, we went through the earthquakes and the fires and the pandemic and the fucking murder hornets and the fucking everything. And fucking Carol Baskin. Carol fucking Baskin. <laughs> and uh, everybody being sent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everyone being sent home and, and isolated and locked out from each other and unable to talk and unable to see each other and live music completely gone from the world, basically. Um, all this shit that we went through for this last year and a half, you know, on top of that, I went through some health stuff the last two or three months. I almost died. Um, just coming back now, even my voice is a little strange too. Um, part of the reason we haven't podcasted is yeah, I've been, uh, well, face down for a few months. Um, really, really sobering. One of those things that makes you wake up and go, Whoo, that was close. That was probably the closest I've ever come to, to not waking up. Um, not listening to my friend's album that I played on, recorded on right before. Uh, that was that week, wasn't it? Yeah, it was something right, like that. It was right before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so very trippy to to record that, go down for a few months like that, and then come back and actually hear it. it was kind of cool. Um, but where I was going with this is that we're we've all been through all this shit in sixteen, eighteen months of just. Straight up shit, right? Everybody's life has been fucked, and we've, we've been all trying to hold, hang in there and wait for spring. Um, I feel like it's here. I, I don't want, like I said, I don't want to sound too cheesy, but I feel like I feel like spring this year is spring, or what it's supposed to represent: um, hope and new life and uh, rebirth and feeling the sun on your shoulders, kind of thing. Um, we got a new album out. You got so it's new music. We've got uh, we've got vaccines finally out there. People starting to get healthy. The fear is that's been wrapped around everyone's heart and around their head is starting to go away. I feel like um, everything is new and we're starting to sprout a little bit. And maybe twenty twenty one is not going to suck. Maybe it's going to be the reverse of all the shit we went through in twenty twenty. And maybe we can maybe we can now that we're finally not. Fighting the political battle anymore? Maybe we're all we can let all the hate go, and we can let go all the division, and we all like everybody who's been so bound up in all this crap the last few years, man. It's new. Let's just I, I don't know. I got hope, and I feel good, and and it's um it's exciting, and um it makes me feel 
It makes me feel like this is how stuff is supposed to be. Maybe we got to a little too deep, all of us, into how shitty and normal it felt to be shitty the last year or so. so. You know, and, and I think a lot of people had to look in the mirror this year because they couldn't, they couldn't go out and be the person they normally were. And it's tough. It's tough to stay at home and be with your own thoughts sometimes. Yeah. And uh, luckily, you know, I have music and some people have working on cars and some people have this and that, but some people don't have anything. And, and that's where it really got hard and really got dark for a lot of people. And I totally get that. And, and I, I can't imagine um, how you felt when you were down and out. And I'm glad you made it through, man. Yeah, me too. Uh, I was worried there for a bit. I'm sure you were too. Uh, plus, um, man, I went through all that shit, but I came through. Um, I came through lighter, obvious for obvious reasons. <laughs> so I lost some weight, and I actually finally managed to quit smoking too, which was uh, it's a big thing. Been, hell yeah, been hanging on my head for a while. I was like, God, I need to get rid of these fucking cigarettes. These are not good. Um, and finally had enough of a of a kick in the ass reason to you know wake up call to do it. So that's good. Yeah, and I mean. Does it feel better? A little yeah, bit? yeah. Honestly, I do. I feel. I, mean, I think I feel better all the way around. Cool. Still dude. fighting some uh, some side effects of you know all that shit and uh, getting strength back. But yeah, man. Well, it's it's one of those processes that just takes a lot of time. Yeah. So, well, like I said, I'm glad you're back. I'm Thanks. glad. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thanks, and, man. And making positive positive changes. I just can't wait for to fucking play live again. And oh, be honest with you, man, all the shit being over, I want to go to Vegas. I want to party it up. I want to. I just want to live again, man. It just feels like everything has been so fucked and so down and so locked up for so long. I mean, you can't even remember what it was like to go and and just stab walk. a hooker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Uh, your Vegas might be different than <laughs> <Right>. my Vegas. <laughs> so it all stays there, man. It's good. It's good. Um, but but yeah, dude. I think you're I think you're spot on with 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 what you're saying. I I I feel like my 2020 was way different than a lot of people's 2020. Because for me, I turned a lot of it into positivity. Like I that was like the month in February of 2020 is when my girlfriend moved in with me with her dogs and. Uh, I was able to save some money. I was able to get a lot of work done. I was able to put an album out. I was able to um, come up with a lot of new cover songs for the band I'm in. I have a couple of originals now for that. I was able to acquire a few things I needed or wanted. Well, maybe 2020 is what you need, man. I mean, I like, I mean yeah. You need another year. I know. For me, it was. <laughs> uh, I feel really guilty almost because I'm like... I'm like, man, I had a great 2020. Yeah, I don't think it was like that for a lot of people. Man. I, didn't I think, have, I think I, a lot of people really fucking struggled to survive. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I saw it, and it sucks. A lot of my friends really struggled, and I tried to help out where I could. But, you know, for me, I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, I didn't even have to wear pants to work. Yeah, it's been nice, right? Yeah, it's been great because I, again, like I was saying earlier, I sweat a lot. So, I, look, dude, just think about how <laughs> how great your like everything will be for you when you can finally pay off the titanium. Oh God, think the titanium! That. So the I, have a, I have a Ford Escape titanium edition <laughs> that I've had for uh, since twenty fifteen, February twenty fifteen. I bought it. Still paying on it, seven hundred fifty dollars a month. I had two other call, cars rolled into it, though. I still so. can't even fathom. That's like a house payment. Like, <laughs> you couldn't fathom signing that paper. That's like, <laughs> right. yeah, sure. Yeah, I couldn't either. Uh, I don't know where I was at. Man. Oh, you know what? And what sucked is like right after I signed the paperwork, two months later, I lost my job. I was like, I had just committed to this I, I just really picture like payment. the finance company being in the back of a like a pawn shop slash meat market <laughs> thing. <laughs> so like, yeah, sign right here, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great deal for yeah. you. It's eight years at 750 a month. <laughs> you're, you're the one winning out here, not us. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's how they get you, man. They make you feel great about yourself and your nah, decision. Man, like you move it on, you can get to that thing pretty soon. You'll be in good shape. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I've, I was just talking about it the other night. I think I have like 14 months left. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm counting it down, man. I'm like, part of me is like, should I make? Some, I should probably just make some extra payments while I'm at it, you know. Right. But I might, I might be going on sell a, some Swedish guitars, man. And just I, might pay going, the crop. I might be going on a trip to Nevada soon, so I don't know. But uh, anyway, dude, uh, glad you're on the podcast again. Glad we could do this. Glad you're okay. Glad I'm okay. 
I, I yeah. Uh, hey, so since we're here, I know I know we probably should be signing off pretty soon, but um, today is April twelfth, twenty twenty one. No, tenth. April 10th, 2021. Davy Jones' birthday. What up, Davy Jones? Yeah, just, if you're listening, Davis, a shout out to you since there's a, there's a party? Birthday party. Question mark? Party? <laughs> Tonight in your arm? Honor? Um, happy birthday, brother. Um, if you guys don't know Davy, he's a driving force out here in music. Uh, musician, venue owner, uh, just all around good guy and sexy as fuck. Always runs sound. Yeah, just just a good guy. Um, so happy birthday to him and to to his people. Um, I don't know my birthday's coming up, but we don't care about that. Um, what else is coming around? Is there the shows aren't when we're here? I heard. Oh, this is something, Dane. I heard that. Uh, we're looking at um, the yellow tier in another week or so, which means um, public gatherings uh, up to 500 people. Wow. So sh- concerts and gigs may be coming back by summertime. I can wow. just the thought of that makes me fucking giddy. I haven't played a show in way too fucking yeah, long. Yeah, I've had these. They might be giant tickets for a while. Well, that too, but I just <laughs> want to fucking play, man. I know. You know, like as much as I want to go to a concert, I'd much rather just play one. I know. I, know. I, I think I get more out of that. I, I, I learn a lot from watching real big bands play, but man, I just love going out there and playing. It's like I was born to do it, brother. Yeah, oh, us too. We're gonna try and really do a blitz this year and uh, get onto the um, onto the touring scene and try and play a lot of different places nice. this year. So yeah, yeah, I'm sure Florida will have you anywhere but Florida and Texas. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't covered that. <laughs> But no, it's probably in California. A lot of the um, live the, from the St. Augustine Gator Farm, <laughs> six feet over. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lose a shoe, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, like I, I am totally down to uh, do the same thing. In fact, I had somebody um, reach out to me recently and say, uh, "Hey, do you want to do Desert Danish at the, my house party? And you want to come to Ohio and play for a compilation <laughs> gig?" <laughs> And oh, and here's another thing. I use a tablet when I sing because I'm lazy and I don't remember stuff very good. And I thought about it when I was watching Rocket Man, and I thought I said, these motherfuckers that play piano can have all their lyrics spread out across this whole damn thing. No one says a word, but I have one fucking tablet. Everybody shits their pants. Look, man, I'm just gonna say if you. If you're saying cover songs, okay, because you probably don't know the words. But if you wrote the fucking words, remember your own fucking words. That's all I'm saying. Damn. It's not like you've got 600 songs and you can't remember what fucking order to put the words in. Yeah, but I wrote the room like 10 years ago. That was like 20 songs oh, ago. <laughs> if you got like the 12 song performance, Ben, you can't remember the words of 12 of your own fucking songs, you got a problem. Uh, yeah, I don't practice. Put the fucking tablet away. That's all it is. Get rid of the crutch. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, we're glad to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that some more. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you more than you know. Um, we hope to get some more of these out to you real soon. Yeah, uh, we, should, we should try and come up with some uh, some more interesting guests. I mean, uh, I know it's something that we always talk about, but there's a lot of people out there that would spice this up quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the problem I run into is I thought I had I thought I had remote guest stuff figured out, and I don't. So I need to figure that p- part out because there's a lot of remote people that I can talk sure. to and reach out to. Um, there, we live like we've said a couple times. We live in Rich Tucky, which is well. Just, hey, no, let's put the challenge out there since we're, and there's two things, right? So let's put it out there. Let's say if you're listening to this and you think that you are interesting and you think that you want to um, participate and got some stuff to talk about, um, contact us. Yeah, hit us up. Um, it'd be great. We never know what could come out of this. We might get someone on here that's just fucking bizarre shit. <laughs> so. I sharpen knives at a chicken farm. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, and you do have to be able to do a Christopher Walken impersonation. Otherwise, um, that's just a, that's a non- non-starter, right? Yeah. So I was... I mean, I was, we should just change that and make it an impression because half of people don't, don't even know who Christopher Walken is, which you know, is sad. You know, we were doing the Christopher Walken thing and I was watching uh, True Romance about a month ago and all I could think of was like, I totally forgot Walken was in this. Really? I mean, he's a badass. Yeah. He's a badass. He in it. Um, so anyway, yeah, if you can do an impression, even if you can't, 
We want to hear from you. No, I think if you're going to be on the show, then you spend yeah, five yeah, fucking minutes and learn how to Im- Im- do an impression of something. It's it's 2021. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, impersonate your friend. No, seriously. Thank you, guys, and um, I look forward to, to uh, talking to you soon. And I can't wait for more movies to start fucking coming out. <laughs> Good God, because we're talking about movies, music, and everything in between. So thank you, everybody, so much. Uh, from Brian Holm and myself, we will talk to you again soon. Later. Later.